we as black people all over the planet have a sickness where we, we, we think what we have isn't good enough. You're talking to me saying that, okay, people in Ghana, the youth especially, want to get out of here. Slavery, they took you from somewhere and took you somewhere else and forced you to work. But in colonization, you got your ass kicked right where you were standing. And instead of going to the shrine and pouring libation, you drinking the blood and, the, and, and, and eating the body of some cracker with a whip that kicked your buttocks. <laughs> now I'm saying to you, my friend, we're, we're eating a white wafer. It ain't even a wheat bread. Take this body, this white, dry, pasty bread and eat it. You understand me? So many people are coming for you. I don't care about that, brother. I'm not talking about Yesu Hamashiach. Oh, okay. I'm not talking about Isa Ibn Maryam. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the imagery, the characterization. My point being, brother, is that we were mentally colonized and mentally enslaved, and we were taught to not appreciate ourselves and what we have. To the point where we can be so ass backwards where we're standing on gold and you want to go get a fiat currency, dollars, which isn't backed by gold or pounds, which is not backed by gold or Europe, which is euros, which is not backed by gold. You're standing on the gold and you want to go somewhere or foreign where they don't like. What we do need from you is your subscription, your comment, your like, and most importantly, your share. If you do this, you are showing us real support. Or I can even give you famous for free when I see you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> when you subscribe, let us know in the comment box that you've joined our family. We will give you a shout out and mention your name in our next video. This is a follow-up video of uh, a conversation I had with Dr. Dean somewhere at Atlantic Hotel when the COVID broke out. And he says so many interesting things about the diasporans showing up in Ghana, Africa actually and doing stuff. Today I'm here and Dr. Dean want to say a lot of things uh, concerning how, how, what. You can make it in Ghana. Dr. Mm. Zin, Dean. Dr. Dean. He's actually a chiropract... What? We call it chiropractic doctor. Chiropractic. I'm a doctor of chiropractic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I didn't go to school. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. Dean. Yes, sir. You want people to understand that they can make it in Ghana here? Most definitely. Most Why definitely. do you say that? There are substantial opportunities in Ghana. And uh, myself as a black doctor coming in from America, uh, Ghana offers a lot of opportunity because the majority Hold on, Dr. D. Yes, sir. Here in this country, people actually do think, especially the youth, mm -hmm. that there's actually nothing here. And if you give them a chance, maybe you hire an airplane and you say, everybody get in and go to Europe. They are going. Mm. I very well understand that. And... It also brings me to the question that I had to face is, what's worse, slavery or colonialization? And uh, I can't say one is worse than the other. Being a, an African American or a black American, um, I always thought slavery was worse than colonization. But now living here for almost 12 years and seeing the mental You've bondage. You've been in Ghana for 12 good years. Is that what you mean? Almost 12 good years. Almost yes. 12 years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. And as I'm saying, it reveals a lot when you've been here on the ground and... You know, we're coming from the diaspora and we've been brutalized for hundreds of years. And we think w our struggle is the worst struggle. But... Um, I beg my brothers and sisters in the diaspora to also think about the fact that there are people here that were literally <laughs> forced into a degree of servitude on their own land. And instead of serving their shrines and instead of looking in the mirror and looking at each other and seeing the face of God, they're looking at their open colonizer and oppressor and saying, this is our Lord and Savior. This image is our Lord and Savior. And anthropologically, historically, the image is entirely wrong. Now, I'm using that and I want to go back to the thing about being able to succeed here. You understand? First of all, we need to have an attitude of Sankofa, going back and fetching something great when we return to the continent. Well, what, what, what's the meaning of that word? Sankofa. 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 <laughs> go back for it. Uh -huh. Go back for it. Yes. He's actually trying to speak Akan. The word is Sankofa. San means go back and Kofa means speak it. So Sankofa. Go back for it. Mm -hmm. Go back for it. Thank you. Oh, most <laughs> definitely. I'm back. And I got it. And I don't want other people to miss the opportunity. 
Uh, there are many people, and I mentioned it as a black doctor, man. I mean, when I graduated, I would say out of the 20 black chiropractors that graduated from chiropractic university, which I say to you is, is equivalent to medical university. There's no, there's no difference. We do more anatomy and physiology. They do more pharmacology. That's it. That's the only difference. Uh, the way we uh, approach our health. Um, but out of 20, I would say maybe 12 didn't even go into practice, discouraged. Discouraged because we as black people all over the planet have a sickness where we, we, we think what we have isn't good enough. You're talking to me saying that, okay, people in Ghana, the youth especially, want to get out of here. Oh, My brother, man. get a load of this. You Fuck me. Aha, uh -huh, I'm Yadu. <laughs> we're here, bro. We're here. Let me be hanging. You know what I mean? So we're here, and we're here standing on gold and diamonds and oil and bauxite and manganese. Period. But they are all locked up. Oh, we should unlock them. Charlie, we should unlock them. Get a shovel, unlock them. And you know the way. Ah. Uh, and, and, <laughs> and it depends on your field. You understand me? I, I'm saying get a shovel and unlock them. I'm talking about the opportunities. You understand? I'm not talking about illegal galamse. But I am saying get your shovel, get your filter, and find the resources and use the resources that are right here under our toes. As indigenous and those of us coming back in the spirit of Sankofa understand that maybe I'm not a miner. Maybe I'm not into minerals like that. But maybe I have a skill like a doctor or a massage therapist or a naturopathic doctor or something like that. And they want to come back to Africa or come to Africa. We call it repatriation. Mm. You understand me? Repatriate back to Africa. And they want to have an opportunity to do their craft, to mine their skills, to bring something that can also benefit the society as well as themselves. Like I, I, I say to you, as a black doctor, now I come from a family of black doctors, by the way, and entrepreneurs. So you're not the only doctor in your family? No, 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 no. My mother's whole side of the family, everyone, are, are, they're dentists, oral surgeons. I'm the only chiropractic doctor in wow. the family, yes. And I have naturopathic doctors as well in our family. Uh, but nonetheless, like, in America, black don't really want to go support black. Because they think the white doctor is better. You understand me? Now, so as a black doctor, and even me, fair colored so as wait, I am. It, it, is not not something, it is not something that is only happening here in Ghana. No. Like over here, blacks don't really support each other. No, brother. We even don't. in this city, we so don't. Itakra, the, no same, way. the same mental programming and institutionalization by slavery was done through colonization. And I say to you, at one time, I thought the slavery one was worse. Now I look at it and I say, hell, well... Slavery, they took you from somewhere and took you somewhere else and forced you to work. But in colonization, you got your ass kicked right where you were standing. And instead of going to the shrine and pouring libation, you drinking the blood and, the, and, and, and eating the body of some cracker with a whip that kicked your buttocks. <laughs> now I'm saying to you, my friend, we're, we're eating a white wafer. It ain't even a wheat bread. Take this body, this white, dry, pasty bread and eat it. You understand me? So many people are coming for you. I don't care about that, brother. I'm not talking about Yesu Hamashiach. Oh, okay. I'm not talking about Isa, Ibn Maryam. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the imagery, the characterization. Listen, man, God don't make mistakes. God doesn't put white people in the desert. Did white people come to the desert? Oh, most definitely, because they're there now. But if you look on the walls of ancient Egypt and you look in North Africa, you see people in the ancient day walking with no shirt on, brother. Kofi, only Kofi proper can walk around on Buzwa, in Buzwa all day with no shirt on and not get sunburned. Now, what about, you know, uh, uh, Crazy Bruni? <laughs> you understand me? Crazy Bruni. Or, 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 or he's, he, he can't survive under the sun like that. That's what I'm saying to you. The imagery of these characters that we've studied through history and religion, the imagery is wrong. Do you understand me? It's not just Christianity. Islam does the same silliness. Bilal, who is said to be dark as midnight, is said to be the son of an Arab and an Ethiopian slave. Have you ever seen a Ghana Lebanese child? Do they ever come out black? No, no, no. They come out fair. Maybe my complexion. Really? Milky coffee. You understand me? Still coffee, but milky coffee. My point being, brother, is that we were mentally colonized and mentally enslaved, and we were taught to not appreciate ourselves and what we have. 
to the point where we can be so ass backwards where we're standing on gold and you want to go get a fiat currency, dollars, which isn't backed by gold or pounds, which is not backed by gold or Euro, which is euros, which is not backed by gold. You're standing on the gold and you want to go somewhere a foreign where they don't like you. And for me as a black doctor, striving to do good for black people, I also want, <laughs> I also want to, to be able to be appreciated and be in an environment where it's other black people and we can create a successful society. And this is also why as a chiropractic doctor and a teacher of massage therapy and neuromuscular therapy, I want people from the diaspora, many of which who try to contact me, to find out, hey doc, what, you know, I'm a naturopathic doctor, or I'm a massage therapist, how can I get set up in Ghana? And that's where I want people to know about the institution like the Traditional Medical Practice Council, which is Ghana's licensing board for massage and body work and naturopathics and herbalists. All of us are supposed to be signed up and licensed there. And then that gives us a license to practice in this jurisdiction. See, if I have an American license to drive a car, when I come to Ghana and I drive, I'll be arrested. Sure. If I have an American license to be a chiropractor and I come to Ghana and don't get a license, I will be what? Arrested. Uh-huh. As it should be. So I don't want to see my friends and colleagues, be they chiropractic, massage, naturopathic, I want to see people coming in from the diaspora and having an opportunity to live their life's passion in an environment where they will be appreciated, brother. But do you honestly think? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do think. <laughs> but I'm listening to you. Come, talk you know to what me. I'm going to say. Uh, how do you know? Uh, I'm going to Do you now. honestly think uh, that if all these guys should come, you should have about 20 of them show up in Ghana with genuine intention to practice uh -huh. what you're practicing, mm -hmm. they will get a license. Yes. If you're a... If, 20 of you guys and you are you talking about chiropractors yes if you are an american chiropractic if you graduated from a chiropractic school in america and you come to ghana you will surely qualify for a license if you went to massage school in america or uk or the caribbean and you come to ghana you there is an avenue for you to get a license hell if you never went to school but you have people that will vouch for you and you have other colleagues that will allow you to do a small internship in their clinic, you understand me, mm -hmm. then they will also license you. There are a variety of avenues. You understand me? Sure. Now, the, the easiest way is to be properly credentialed. So even when you see this traditional medical practice council license, underneath you see my doctor of chiropractic license, my clinical proficiency in x-ray, my neuromuscular therapy certification, all of these are what is applied what I use to go to the ministries of health. But I've heard stories of people showing up and wanting to apply for get a license like this, and mm -hmm. they don't get it because they are not Ghanaians. Because they're not Ghanaians. That's not going to be a reason why. That I, 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 let me say this. First of all, there's bullshit everywhere, brother. You understand me? There's, when I say bullshit, I'm talking about you know, people feeling like they want to make life difficult for you because you're not from my village or not from my tribe or I think you're coming into my country making all the money and I don't want you... Yeah, those are petty, th petty things to get in the way. If you're properly credentialed, there's a way. And this is why people need to know and be able to communicate with people like myself so that... So, that <laughs> so what I'm saying about, like, when, you, when, when the people are hearing and they know the proper protocol and where to go, and people like myself, they can also help them. You understand me? Because I, I strongly believe people really want to. You see, the first video that we did at Atlantic mm -hmm. Hotel, I don't know, I sent you a test, a very long test, if you were able to see it. A man saw the video and he said that he's actually working on getting about 5,000 diasporans mm -hmm. to relocate to Ghana mm -hmm. and start a business because of the video he saw of you. Wonderful. But some of these guys are thinking that when they show up, in this country or on this continent they will crash they will go down they will some of them will <laughs> it's reality man it's not a fantasy world bro it's a survivalist society man 
You know, I mean, and when I say it's a survivalist society, uh, the doctor that I worked for when I originally came here uh, said it to me, and, and I know what he meant now. He's like, it's a survivalist so, uh, society. In other words, people feel like woe is me and they're desperate. You understand me? They feel like life is difficult here. It's not easy. Even in your, this is common crappy saying that I hear people say, it's not easy, oh. Bullshit. Words sound power. It is what you make it. You understand me? Nothing is... Man, easy woman is going to give you a disease. <laughs> easy education is not accredited. You understand me? Easy money is finished. You don't even know where it went. Do you understand me? Nothing worth having is easy. You want an easy girl? No. <laughs> Do you understand me? You want the one that makes you wait till, till marriage? Almost. You understand me? So... There are people, yeah, if you 5,000 people come, eh, maybe 3,000 will go back. <laughs> Listen, some people will go back as soon as the lights turn off. Doom so one time. Hey, what the hell? I'm out of here. <laughs> you understand me? Let them go. Kojo, if we could open the gates of Ghana to the world and say, hey, those of you that want to leave, leave. I know it'll be a shortage of people that. But here's the thing, man. Then we could be with the Ghanaians that want to be Ghanaians. Man, I'm a proud Ghanaian, bro. I'm a proud Ghanaian. Yes, I'm a black American. Yes, I'm an aboriginal American. Yes, I'm an African American. But I'm a proud Ghanaian. Nobody can take that from me. I have my passport. I have my voter's ID. My Ghana card is coming. You mm -hmm. understand me? My ECOWAS card is coming. You understand me? I traded 50 white stars for one black star, my brother. And I'm not alone. There are many of us that would love to come. And they need to know, <laughs> no, my brother, because wow. black, is, black is powerful, Chelly. You mm -hmm. understand me? So mm -hmm. <laughs> there's opportunity here. And people need to know how to take advantage of that. To people that are listening, that, that, that are into massage and body work and natural health care, the traditional medical practice council is for them. And if you are properly credentialed and you go, Nine times out of ten, you're going to get a license. You understand? That, the ministries are just like any other business. They want to make money. They want to give you a license. The thing is, we have to protect Ghana from clandestine and irregular and fraudulent practitioners. And there's already a lot of them here. Plenty, plenty, plenty. <laughs> Brother, you have people walking door to door selling herbs and roots. With nothing on the bottle, you don't know what the hell is in there. But see, in Ghana, we have a degree of faith in nature. So we trust that one more so than the one that comes in the pill package at the, from Biden. the pharmacy. You understand me? And that's an advantage for natural health care practitioners. But we shouldn't take advantage of that. We should use that to our advantage and then go and license ourselves properly so that we can properly function in this jurisdiction and advertise properly and, and then more people can see you and then you're a part of a, a, of a registry that, that requ organization, yes, uh, Ministries of Health has licensed you now and now, now at that point then you can take your degree and your, and your craft to the next level. You understand me? And it's not just chiropractic and natural health care, it's so many other, it's everything. If you're an MD and you come here you know you have to get a medical license, right? If you're a lawyer and you, and you move from America to Ghana, now Ghana has a British legal system, so they have to do a little different schooling, some small schooling, you know, upgrading, and then they can sit for the bar for, for, for Ghana. Sure. My point is, for every profession, there is a, a, an authority, a licensing authority, which is supposed to filter out the garbage and let the, the good stuff pass. And there's a lot of good stuff in the diaspora. We just have to know that you have to go through the filter. You, are, you, are you with me? Yeah, sure. Yeah, and, and you know, brother, I, I live and work in Ghana. And I have to do very little to make it. You saw me in the pool, bro. Sure. Right? So, yeah. so <laughs> if all these guys are watching and really, they are counting on your words, you are letting them believe that Ghana is good. Or First Africa. of all, hold on, I got to cut you off, brother. I am not encouraging anybody to believe in anything. I'm not encouraging to believe in anything. Experience, evidence, and reason leads to knowledge. You understand me? I'm going off what I know. Now, if someone wants to take, 
uh, mustard seed of faith in what I'm saying mm -hmm. and investigate further, that's what I'm encouraging them to do. Okay. You understand me? Okay. We have enough, we have more than enough people selling belief, brother. Seek facts and knowledge and do things properly so we can upgrade ourselves as a people. Because you are a testimony to what you are talking about. You've been in Ghana for almost 12 years. Yes, sir. And uh, you have a business and it, it is it is growing. Greatly. So which <laughs> means if people should show up over here uh -huh. with genuine intention to work, it, it, it might work for them as well. Yeah, and it's, yeah, I like how you said that, Kojo. It might work for them. Because more than 50% of businesses in America fail in the first year. So... You know, I was watching something the other day with this actor, Denzel Washington. He's talking about, he's a motivational talk. He's talking about all the times he failed. You know, you heard of Denzel Washington? Yeah, I know. Okay, I know yes. Him. Great actor. This man's won plenty of, of awards. His acting is awesome. And he represents black masculinity to the fullest. He never sold his soul out. Now, he's talking about all the times he failed in, in interviews trying to get an acting job. I was listening to Jay-Z's album, you know, Jay-Z the rapper, you understand me? And he was talking about, he went from, from record label to record label trying to get someone to sign him and they all said he sucked and they laughed him out the building. He's a billionaire now in the game, bro, and probably one of the best. Oh, you're not always going to win, man. You're gonna, you're gonna, don't be scared to bump your head. If it was easy, everybody would do it. But you understand the bottom me? Bottom line is there are so many opportunities in Africa, right? Completely, completely. And if you're coming from abroad and you have a way to create a residual income, you understand me? Mm -hmm. Like you own property and you're renting it there. The exchange rate right now is like almost one to six. So if you have two thousand U.S. dollars coming into Ghana from abroad every month, whether it's your retirement, what have you, pension, whatever. If you have $2,000, it's 12,000 Ghana CDs. What can you do with that in a month? A whole I, lot. Brother, <laughs> <laughs> you understand me? You'd have to be foolish. Even if you had a drug problem, <laughs> which I, you couldn't spend all of that money. You understand me? You'd have to just be foolish. And you'd have to be foolish every month. Because it's residual income. So I think that this is something that so many of you should take advantage of. Just look at the currency. Like he's saying, you have a dollar in America. When you bring it here in Ghana, it's almost like six times what you have in America. I'm telling you. Or wherever you're coming from. Maybe Euro or anything of mm -hmm. that sort. Euro is even, it's even more, bro. Like, listen, here's the thing I say. Look, first of all, don't believe me, check it out. That means, like, a friend of mine, a college colleague of mine, um, is talking to me. He's like, he's coming in February. And he's like, Doc, I really want to come and make a one-way ticket and stay. And he's like, but, you know, I don't know. What do you think? I said, man, experience, evidence, and reason, man. You get your ticket round trip. You come over here. You feel it out. Get you a, 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 a two-, three-month uh, um, visa. Uh, mm. That gives you enough time to get your feet on the ground and see what things are like. And in, in the first three months, <laughs> you'll realize whether, you know, hey, is this, is this really what you want to do? You understand? Sure. Now, mind you, when people come over a lot, they have rosy glasses. We call them the rosy glasses. You know, they don't see a lot. Sometimes it takes six months for a or a year before you really be like, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is where I am. This is what's going on. See, there's a degree of it where you're going to miss your friends and family. <laughs> Oh, definitely family. Ah, it's rough. That's rough. But it's not expensive to start more family. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being real with you, man. You know, I, I'm, I'm serious. Mm, like, sure. you know, my little boy ran in here. You understand me? When I, when I began having children in Ghana and seeing my own reflection coming manifested out of Ghanaian soil via indigenous Ghanaian women, it made me more home. Do you understand me? Sure. You know, I have children here. I, I can't leave. You understand me? I, I, if war breaks out, I'm here. So what I'm saying about, like, when, you, when, when the people are hearing and they know the proper protocol and where to go, and people like myself, they can also help them. You understand me? Because I, I strongly believe people really want to. You see, the first video that we did at Atlantic mm -hmm. Hotel, 
I don't know, I sent you a test, a very long test, if you were able to see it. A man saw the video and he said that he's actually working on getting about 5,000 diasporans mm -hmm. to relocate to Ghana mm -hmm. and start a business because of the video he saw of you. Wonderful. But some of these guys are thinking that when they show up in this country or on this continent, they will crash, they will go down. They will. Some of them will. <laughs> it's reality, man. It's not a fantasy world, bro. It's a survivalist society, man. You know, I mean, and when I say it's a survivalist society, uh, the doctor that I worked for when I originally came here uh, said it to me, and, and I know what he meant now. He's like, it's a survivalist uh, society. In other words, people feel like, woe is me, and they're desperate. You understand me? They feel like life is difficult here. It's not easy. Even in your, this is common crappy saying that I hear people say, it's not easy, oh. Bullshit. Words sound power. It is what you make it. You understand me? Nothing is... Man, easy woman is going to give you a disease. <laughs> easy education is not accredited. You understand me? Easy money is finished. You don't even know where it went. Do you understand me? Nothing worth having is easy. You want an easy girl? No. <laughs> Do you understand me? You want the one that makes you wait till, till marriage. Almost. You understand me? So... There are people, yeah, if you 5,000 people come, eh, maybe 3,000 will go back. <laughs> Listen, some people will go back as soon as the lights turn off. Doom so one time. Hey, what the hell? I'm out of here. <laughs> you understand me? Let them go. Kojo, if we could open the gates of Ghana to the world and say, hey, those of you that want to leave, leave. I know there'll be a shortage of people that. But here's the thing, man. Then we could be with the Ghanaians that want to be Ghanaians. Man, I'm a proud Ghanaian, bro. I'm a proud Ghanaian. Yes, I'm a black American. Yes, I'm an aboriginal American. Yes, I'm an African American. But I'm a proud Ghanaian. Nobody can take that from me. I have my passport. I have my voter's ID. My Ghana card is coming. You mm -hmm. understand me? My ECOWAS card is coming. You understand me? I traded 50 white stars for one black star, my brother. And I'm not alone. There are many of us that would love to come. And they need to know, <laughs> no, my brother, because wow. black, is, black is powerful, mm. Chelly. You mm. understand me? So mm. <laughs> there's opportunity here. And people need to know how to take advantage of that. To people that are listening, that, that, that are into massage and body work and natural health care, the traditional medical practice council is for them. And if you are properly credentialed and you go, Nine times out of ten, you're going to get a license. You understand? That, the ministries are just like any other business. They want to make money. They want to give you a license. The thing is, we have to protect Ghana from clandestine and irregular and fraudulent practitioners. And there's already a lot of them here. Plenty, plenty, plenty. <laughs> Brother, you have people walking door to door selling herbs and roots with nothing on the bottle. You don't know what the hell is in there. But see, in Ghana, we have a degree of faith in nature. So we trust that one more so than the one that comes in the pill package at the, you know, from the pharmacy. You understand me? And that's an advantage for natural health care practitioners. But we shouldn't take advantage of that. We should use that to our advantage and then go and license ourselves properly so that we can properly function in this jurisdiction and advertise properly and, and then more people can see you and then you're a part of a, a, of a registry that, that requ organization, yes, uh, Ministries of Health has licensed you now and now, now at that point then you can take your degree and your, your craft to the next level. You understand me? And it's not just chiropractic and natural health care, it's so many other, it's everything. If you're an MD and you come here you know you have to get a medical license, right? If you're a lawyer and you, and you move from America to Ghana, and Ghana has a British legal system, so they have to do a little different schooling, some small schooling, you know, upgrading, and then they can sit for the bar for, for, for Ghana. Sure. My point is, for every profession, there is a, a, an authority, a licensing authority, which is supposed to filter out the garbage and let the, the good stuff pass. And there's a lot of good stuff in the diaspora. We just have to know that you have to go through the filter. You, are, you, are you with me? Yeah, sure. Yeah, and, and you know, brother, I, I live and work in Ghana. And I have to do very little to make it. 
You saw me in the pool, bro. Sure. Right? So, yeah. so <laughs> if all these guys are watching and really they are counting on your words, you are letting them believe that Ghana is good or First Africa. of all, hold on, I gotta cut you off, brother. I am not encouraging anybody to believe in anything. I'm not encouraging them to believe in anything. Experience, evidence, and reason leads to knowledge. You understand me? I'm going off what I know. Now, if someone wants to take a uh, mustard seed of faith in what I'm saying mm -hmm. and investigate further, that's what I'm encouraging them to do. Okay. You understand me? Okay. We have enough, we have more than enough people selling belief, brother. Seek facts and knowledge and do things properly so we can upgrade ourselves as a people. Because you are a testimony to what you are talking about. You've been in Ghana for almost 12 years. Yes, sir. And uh, you have a business and it, it is it is growing greatly so which means <laughs> if people to show up over here uh -huh. with genuine intention to work it 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 might work for them as well yeah and it's, yeah i like how you said that kojo it might work for them <laughs> because more than 50 percent of businesses in america fail in the first year so you know, I was watching something the other day with this actor, Denzel Washington. He's talking about, he's a motivational talk. He's talking about all the times he failed. You know, you heard of Denzel Washington? Yeah, I know. Okay, I know yes. Him. Great actor. This man's won plenty of, of awards. His acting is awesome. And he represents black masculinity to the fullest. He never sold his soul out. Now, he's talking about all the times he failed in, in interviews trying to get an acting job. I was listening to Jay-Z's album, you know, Jay-Z the rapper, you understand me? And he was talking about, he went from, from record label to record label trying to get someone to sign him and they all said he sucked and they laughed him out the building. He's a billionaire now in the game, bro, and probably one of the best. Oh, you're not always going to win, man. You're gonna, you're gonna, don't be scared to bump your head. If it was easy, everybody would do it. But you understand the bottom me? Bottom line is there are so many opportunities in Africa, right? Completely, completely. And if you're coming from abroad and you have a way to create a residual income, you understand mm -hmm. me? Like you own property and you're renting it there. The exchange rate right now is like almost one to six. So if you have two thousand U.S. dollars coming into Ghana from abroad every month, whether it's your retirement, what have you, pension, whatever. If you have $2,000, it's 12,000 Ghana CDs. What can you do with that in a month? A whole I, lot. Brother, <laughs> <laughs> you understand me? You'd have to be foolish. Even if you had a drug problem, <laughs> which I, you couldn't spend all of that money. You understand me? You'd have to just be foolish. And you'd have to be foolish every month. Because it's residual income. So I think that this is something that so many of you should take advantage of. Just look at the currency. Like he's saying, you have a dollar in America. When you bring it here in Ghana, it's almost like six times what you have in America. I'm telling you. Or wherever you're coming from. Maybe Euro or anything of mm -hmm. that sort. Euro is even, it's even more, bro. Like, listen, here's the thing I say. Look, first of all, don't believe me, check it out. That means like a friend of mine, a college colleague of mine um, is talking to me. He's, like, he's coming in February. And he's like, Doc, I really want to come and make a one-way ticket and stay. And he's like, but you know, I don't know. What do you think? I said, man, experience, evidence, and reason, man. You get your ticket round trip. You come over here. You feel it. I'll get you a, 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 a two or three month uh, um, visa. Uh, mm. that gives you enough time to get your feet on the ground and see what things are like and in, in the first three months <laughs> you'll realize whether you know hey is this is this really what you want to do you understand sure. now mind you when people come over a lot they have rosy glasses we call them the rosy glasses you know they don't see a lot sometimes it takes six months for a year or a year before you really be like okay hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on. this is where i am this is what's going on see there's a degree of it where you're going to miss your friends and family <laughs> Oh, definitely family. Ah, it's rough. That's rough. But it's not expensive to start more family. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being real with you, man. You know, I, I'm, I'm serious. Like, sure. you know, my little boy ran in here. You understand me? When I, when I began having children in Ghana and seeing my own reflection coming manifested out of Ghanaian soil via indigenous Ghanaian women, it made me more home 
Do you understand me? You know, I have children here. I, I can't leave. You understand me? I, I, if war breaks out, I'm here because I have to, to protect them. I'm heavily invested in the soil. Mm. I'm a part of the soil. Someone can deny me and say, oh, well, you're a new Ghanaian. You ain't a real Ghanaian. You're Bibini Bruni, blah, 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 whatever they want to say. Bibini Bruni. Uh, that means, oh, uh, this is foreign African. Okay, I'll accept that, bro. And that's another thing. We have to be thick-skinned when we come. Because, you know... You're going to hear a whole lot, lot that you're not going to like. Go, uh, look, Kofi. <laughs> it, it's... 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 Uh, it's Kojo, right? <laughs> Kojo. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, Kojo. Um, if... If I cried every time I was called Obruni, you understand me? I would just, my whole clothes would be wet. <laughs> it happens every day. When you guys leave, you may be like, oh, this Bruni crazy. <laughs> you understand me? Eh? All I say is, if you're going to call me Bruni, call me Bibbidi Bruni or Bruni Coco. Because even in America, you call me red or yellow and I won't be mad. Because I'm red or yellow. I'm still an African. I'm still a black man. You understand me? You yourself aren't blue black. Mm. You, you just milky chocolate. Cho you just milky chocolate. So <laughs> you understand me? But you know, we have to have thicker skin. You know, and that's one of the things. People come over looking like you, straight from Atlanta, Georgia. Dre look just like you, dress like you, same everything, and they get called white man. <laughs> and then someone will tell them it's your tonation. <laughs> and it, it, it's understandable to a degree. We as Ghanaians have to change also. Because if I tell you when you call me Obruni, and it, you know, whether I'm light or dark, and you call me Obruni, I tell you I'm no Bruni. You should respect me man to man and not push the issue. Because also remember, I'm not from your village. I'm from Washington, D.C., bro. Maryland. You understand me? Like you could get really, you could get killed calling a black man a white man. You understand me? Hey. Bro. That's how much of an insult it is. And, and, and we, is in, we Ghana, in Ghana, the indigenous people aren't realizing that, man. And so people leave. I know doctors that have left Ghana because they were blue black and getting called Obruni every day. And you know what they said leaving? Ah, these people are stupid. Listen, if I tell you Nana Kofo Adewa, our president, is Obruni, am I stupid? <laughs> It's his, his, how? his tonation. He's more British than the Queen of England. Yeah, but see, I would sound stupid to you, right? So we, you, we also, you also look stupid when you call us white. And I'm not just talking about fair, light-skinned, honey, golden brothers like me. I'm talking about, imagine someone calling you white. How would you feel? You know you're not white. Now, we from the diaspora have been fighting this European demon for hundreds of years. And we've repatriated back home, and the first thing you do is call us Obruni? Dude, in my neighborhood, I would beat the brakes off of you. Do you understand that? <laughs> no, I'm being real with you. I'm talking to you from the gut, from the soul, man. It's real, man. <laughs> the point is this. Ghana has opportunity. And we have to know how to talk to each other and be patient with each other as diasporians, new Ghanaians, indigenous Ghanaians. You understand? We have to know how to respect each other. Ah, if I say, ah, you foolish small boy, <laughs> I tell you, I'll say anything, uh -huh. but I have you over here. Uh -huh. I tell you, exactly. So when you say, call me something, Bruni, say it. Oh, Bruni. Ah! <laughs> 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 Give me something. Only me hanging, brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, I'm just saying. Uh, what I'm talking to you is. But you see, it doesn't really sound uh, offensive to us. Like when you say it's but, kind of normal, but not but if I come to your village, so serious. If I come to your village and I'm here, and see if some like I could talk to my friend, I'd be like, oh man, you foolish, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You cutting a fool. And I can say that that way with that same energy to my brother over there, and he's not tripping. He's not upset. But if I say to you, oh, bro, you act new, you're just fooling, bro. You'd be like, ah, a fool. You call me a fool. Ah, ah, this money. Ah, you understand? It's, it's true, right? So I know that. So if you ever heard me saying to you or someone else, you foolish small boy, I know it's wartime. 
You should know it's wartime. But we didn't come for war, bro. We came back in the spirit of Sankofa. Sankofa. Uh-huh. Wow, so no, that's no matter. It's by the name of the... Of the chiropractic clinic, yes. Sankofa chiropractic. Chiropractic Wellness Center. Wow. Because we are coming back in that spirit of going back and fetching it. What are we fetching? A pumadzin. Unqua, a pumadzin, afwadzin. Life, vitality, health. And at Sankofa Chiropractic Wellness Center, we're encouraging you to go back and fetch the internal power of Pumadzi that allows the body to heal, repair, and maintain normal function. And thankfully in Ghana, the indigenous populations have an ear to hear the chiropractic and natural health care message. We are very open to nature and natural healing in Ghana, aren't we? I know people that have broken bones. And they go to the traditional bone setter and he takes herbs and wraps it and, and it heals fine. Sure. Not all the time, but many times. You understand me? This is why those same bone setters are supposed to be with the traditional medical practice council. So that they can have upgraded continuing education. So that they can organize amongst each other like we as chiropractors and we as massage therapists. And I'm saying these avenues are here for us. And, you know, it, it's it, life in Ghana is great. But it also is what you make it. You know, a lot of times we'll come to Ghana, we move to a crowd, like, say like I came here from Atlanta, Georgia, and it's a city. And I'm from Maryland, D.C. area, and I grew up pretty much city. You know, coming to Ghana, if I, if I have to be, if I need that, 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 that movement, to city, I, I shouldn't go move to the country. <laughs> I should try a crowd first, <laughs> you understand me? Because that city is what you want. But if you're, if you're used to a lower, slower pace, like I'm in Takarati, I think Takarati is great because Takarati is a mid size, one of the larger cities in Ghana, sure. but it's a mid size, a mid size seaside beach town with an airport, a mall, and you know, everything else I like to do. So, it, you know, that, that, that's, that's where I went. We have to take time when we come and find the right place. It's not always where the tourist sites are. People come from the diaspora and they move somewhere like Cape Coast. Cape Coast is awesome. I love Cape Coast. I'm there all the time. I'll go today. It's an hour away from Takarati, hour and a half max on a, on a trotro. You understand me? And, but we need to take time and travel around. That's why I say, you know, don't believe what I'm saying. Come spend a month or two and travel around Ghana. See Ghana. Talk to people in various aspects of business. I know people from the diaspora that have come over here and set up security companies. I know, restaurants, hotels, you know, all the different aspects of life. The reality is, you know, we have institutions in Ghana also to, you know, license professionals, you know. Even when it comes to things like, you know, masonry and carpentry, one of the things we, complaints we have when we come from the diaspora is that, well, I don't know, this guy says he's a carpenter. Mm -hmm. But we are used to there being a criteria and a licensure for carpenters in America. Now, I'm not going to say we're going to get that in Ghana right now. I, you know, it's, I, we do need to perfect it even with the, the traditional medical practice council, the licensing component. But the opportunities are here, bro. But you, you see, you said, you said so many interesting things, honestly. And somebody is watching this and is like, I want to get in touch with this guy. Just so they can get more information from you. Because if, if we sit here, we're going to talk for three days continuous and you're going to keep saying a whole lot of interesting things. But if somebody may be watching this and they say, I want to get in touch with this guy and find out so many things from me, how are they going to do that? Yami Adam, I'm very busy. <laughs> <laughs> so to contact me directly and speak with me is a challenge because... You know, I, I mean, I'm riding from one beach resort to another, doing my craft, uh, spending time with my family. I can't have all those direct calls. Um, get in touch with me. Aha, uh -huh, please, and get and get and get a way to get me okay. that way, <laughs> that way, yeah. Because you know, it, you know, as a doctor too, it's very difficult for me so, to give my number to everyone. So. People call me in the middle. I'm working on someone. And I get a phone call. So. Yeah. But what if, uh, in terms of health, like what you're doing, somebody wants to locate here and then... Well, we're easy to find. We're on Google Maps. Like I told you, you were trying to find us today. Sankofa Chiropractic Wellness Center on Google Maps. There's a number they will call. And um, let me give you that number real quick. 
Uh, it is 055-250-8872. 055-250-8872. Okay. And I will go to my personal assistant. Uh, we're in Takarati, Ghana. Uh, I also function out of One Africa Health Resort in Elmina, okay. uh, Ghana. Again, um, you know. So that's it. We're, we're accessible. Yeah. I'm actually putting this what he said in the description box. So click on it and then just locate it and get in touch. That is, if you want to show up here and then just up and down check up and all that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor yeah, yeah. D. But we should find time and then just be visiting around because there are so many interesting places that people need to see. I'm with you. Let's do it. Region. Let's do it. Yes. I'm with you 100%. Time. I'm going to go beach hopping, man. You ready to go beach hopping? I swear to God. I tell you, you do that. I won't do that one. <laughs> <laughs> what we do need from you is your subscription, your comment, your like, and most importantly, your share. If you do this, you are showing us real support.